Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a form of grappling. It's also a form of self-defense that uh, has been made pretty popular by Hoist Gracie in the UFC. And it consists of joint locks and choke holds and self-defense moves from standing and on the ground. And it's a little bit different than other martial arts in the sense that it's not an all or nothing sort of martial art in the sense that you know, when you have to punch someone, you have to punch them with everything you have. But with jiu-jitsu, you can actually be a little bit more humane and apply a pin, a joint hold, and submit the guy or just hold them until you're safe. He was, uh, he was always interested in martial arts and yoga since he was, since he was little. He always used to read books on the martial arts. And um, I took the more boxing route at the younger age. I was always boxing in the gym. And he would constantly, you know, anytime I would see him, he'd be coming over and I would try to box him. He'd be taking me right to the ground, arm locking me or choking me. And I would get frustrated, pick up something, hit him with it. I started jiu-jitsu. A friend of mine invited me in. He was, uh, he was a wrestler and he invited me in to check out this new stuff. And uh, I went in there one day and he was, at that point, the... Uh, the rep for the Gracies in the East Coast. And so I was about 12 years old, he invited me in, and the room was filled with a bunch of tough looking adults. And uh, I tried it out and got whooped on and loved it and just kept on training. Sometimes this, you're tired. So I'm here, I'm holding on, I'm trying to keep my head in there so I can get what I want. And the head is a distraction. I can often put his face with it and move and pull the right way, the way I want. Uh, when I first started doing jiu-jitsu, and I believe it was 1996, there was only three blue, there was only three purple belts, excuse me, around. And uh, there was one purple belt, he was a teenager, and people were talking about him a lot. And luckily I was fortunate enough to know that it was my cousin. And he was basically tapping black belts out when he was a teenager as a purple belt. And I was involved in a car accident at 17 years old, so I was already five years into jiu-jitsu, and I believe I was already a purple belt at the time in high school. In that car accident, um, I, you know, we were blindsided by a car, and there was a drunken driver, and uh, I broke my hips, broke my shoulder, my knee, just pretty much my whole body. The, mo the worst thing was, it was the hips, so I broke my pelvis, broke the pubic bones. And uh, it was a type of injury where there were, I had no pins in my body, there were no casts. I had to lay in my bed, stare at the ceiling, and just deal with it. Snapped his pelvic bone in half. They were talking about him not walking again. It was just at his, his height of his jiu-jitsu career. He was going to tournaments, winning tournaments all the time. And, you know, something like that happens overnight. It's a shocking, it's a shocking experience for everybody in the family. So the first thing I remember after it, it happened, I remember when the accident happened, and I remember then being in the hospital, and this guy came over, thought he was a doctor, and he told me, he was like looking at my chart, and told me, well, it looks like you're never gonna walk again. Looks like one leg's gonna be way shorter than the other, and you're not gonna be able to do any sports or anything. And that was probably one of the most depressing things I ever heard. It just, you know, all I could think is, you know, I can't do a forward bend in yoga, I can't do the yoga postures, and I can't train jujitsu, and it just really broke my heart. And then, um, and then the same guy, he like picked up a trash can and walked away with it. And I, the guy was maintenance there at, at the place. He wasn't a real doctor. I remember walking down there one day and I'm, and I'm watching him and he's doing these breathing exercises. And I wasn't, I, w I wasn't sure what yoga was or, or I didn't have any knowledge on yoga at the time. And I'm watching him and I, and I asked him, I said, what are you doing? And he's basically telling me, he's like, he's like, I'm doing my, I was doing, so I'm exercising. And I didn't understand what he was doing. And, and what it did, it like, Put a light. It put a light on me. I was like thinking, like, here's a person who's in the bed. He can't move. He's crippled, and he's instead of being negative, he's motivated and he's still exercising. Even though he can't move his body, he's still exercising in another form and bettering himself. Even though he's crippled inside of a bed and not be able to move. I thought it was important to train your brain, and I was already involved in yoga as a kid, and I, you know, I just wanted to figure out things to do while I was in bed to you know, make myself better, so always improving. So I watched tons of Gracie tapes, so the guys that were at the, the Gracie affiliate, they sent me tapes, they sent me Gracie in action, which I think I watched about 200 times. Um, I have to do my yoga practice every single day or I can't step on the mat and train jiu-jitsu. 
Um, it's one thing restricting me from major competition because it's very dangerous. If I hurt myself the wrong way, I'll be laid up again, and it's happened before where I kind of overdo it and, you know, my back will go out. One of my favorite things about uh, learning from Phil is that he's able to figure out exactly what you need to learn, and he knows exactly how to, how to teach you what you need to know. I feel more confident, you know, uh, speaking in public as well from, you know, learning how to teach classes from Phil, uh, which is important. I feel um, just more confident pretty much all around, you know, whether it's self-defense or just uh, as a person from learning jiu-jitsu from Phil, but also learning um, how to teach from Phil. At one point in time, I thought like he was giving me a little extra attention because I was his cousin and his family. But as I, I'm very observant, as I looked around the facility, there'd be like 30, 40 students. And I'm looking around and he's giving each and every student that same exact attention as if they were family with him. He treats everyone like he's a part of his family and he gives everyone special attention because he loves jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu in his heart, and he just loves to help, help students achieve their goals in jiu-jitsu. I can go both ways and uh, do an arm drag. It feels weird, right? And then I come across and I keep him impressing. Then I keep him here. Uh, train, training with Phil is awesome, man. I mean, he, any little question I have, he's always running up there and trying to help me out. Uh, his, he's always open to learn new things. You know, he's not like one of those instructors that's going to say, no, this is the way you do it. If he doesn't have the answer to it, he goes out and he finds it. But the theme of my life has always been balance. So in everything I've ever done, I've always tried to achieve, you know, a sense of balance for, for myself so I could relax. Um, so anytime I get to too many extremes, I, you know, I like to take a moment just to relax and center myself. So that word balance is very, very important to me. So I had to include it in the name of the studio. One thing I like about the whole Balance Studios is stuff that he created. We just have a big family in here and everybody's helping everybody else get better. And that kind of reflects, you know, his jujitsu throughout his years of living, you know.